and it will be presented by Shubham uh, Tulsiani. Um, hi. Given this single image, even if we may have never seen this chair before, we can still infer a detailed 3D representation of the object shown. Importantly, not only do we know the depth at the visible points, we have a good guess about the full 3D structure of visible parts. So how is it that we can do this? A single image is ill-posed. So we clearly have to realize in particular in the past, you may have seen a different chair. A chair from a single viewpoint, but as you moved around, you observed it from various other perspectives as well. And of course, you've seen other chair instances and even more. Additionally, as an active agent, you would know how you moved around to obtain these different views. The problem setup that we study here is motivated by these considerations. Formally, the task we want to perform is that of single view reconstruction. That is, at test time, we have a single input RGB image and we want to infer the 3D representation of the object or the scene. And the form of supervision that we consider, akin to what the human agent would have, is multi-view supervision, where we have many instances and a few views per instance. We also consider other forms of multi-view images rather than just RGB images. For example, you may have foreground masks from different views as well. Or maybe associated depth images with different views, say, obtained by a robot with a Kinect sensor that's moving around. Before delving into the specifics of our approach, I'd like to place it in context of the previous single view reconstruction work. This task of recovering 3D from a single image is a very well-studied problem, perhaps dating back to Robert's thesis, where an approach with no learning but a test time optimization was presented. More contemporary approaches learned a deformable shape model using image-based annotations as supervision and then optimized the model's parameters at test time. The current CNN-based approaches have even more efficient and accurate test time inference, but at the cost of much stronger supervision. And I'd argue that this requirement of ground truth 3D supervision is too onerous and that such supervision is not naturally available. Instead, our approach uses weaker forms of supervision but has a similar test time inference procedure. So we want to learn this sort of a prediction network that predicts 3D from an RGB input. But the form of supervision that we have available is multi-view. For example, we may have this other observation of a chair from the front. So, how is it that we can use this form of supervision to learn this prediction network? Well, the role of supervision is to tell us the good predictions from the bad. And this uh, form of multi-view supervision can allow us to do that. As an illustration, consider these three shapes shown here. You'd all agree that given this front-facing image of the chair, the middle one is reasonable, but the other two are not. Because when you'd view these shapes from the front, only the middle one will sort of match the observation here. In other words, the middle shape is geometrically consistent with this image, whereas the other two are not. We build on this insight and say that our predictions should be geometrically consistent with the available observations. I'd like to pause and just re-emphasize what's happening here. We don't tell the CNN exactly what output it should give because we don't have that supervision. Instead, we tell it that whatever output it's predicting should be geometrically consistent with this other observation that we have. And in this way, this geometric consistency loss can allow us to learn from the multi-view supervision that we have and still get the single image 3D prediction network. The figure shown here illustrates a color image as supervisory signal, but instead it can be a foreground mask image or a depth image. The geometric consistency loss that we'll formulate can handle these different kinds of 2D observations. Actually, the idea of computing 3D shapes that are consistent, to, consistent with 2D observations is also not anything new. In fact, the rich area of multi-view reconstruction has successfully leveraged this idea over the years. However, unlike these classical approaches, at test time we only have a single input image and we want to incorporate such form of consistency in a CNN framework. Some recent approaches have actually pursued such incorporation, but for the task of depth prediction instead of full 3D prediction. Two concurrent works did also examine the volumetric prediction task, but unlike ours, their formulation was specific to foreground mask supervision, whereas the formulation we present will be a bit more general. Coming back to our approach, we have to define this geometric consistency loss between a 3D shape and some observation from a known viewpoint. The first insight that we have is that instead of defining the loss between the image and the shape, we can define the loss one ray at a time. And our geometric consistency loss can then be defined as the sum of ray consistency losses with one ray corresponding to each pixel. 
So a task is reduced to having to just define a ray consistency loss between the predicted shape and a ray with some associated observation. There are three components to this ray consistency loss that we want to define. There is the volumetric shape X, which we want to be consistent with a ray R that has an associated observation OR. This observation OR is basically the value of the pixel in the corresponding observation image and can be of varying forms like depth, foreground label, color value, etc. To define this loss, we use two things. First, we look at this ray traveling through a grid with predicted probabilities and find the likelihood of it stopping at various places. We also determine for each of these stopping points how inconsistent is stopping there with respect to the ray observation OR. The ray consistency loss is then defined as the expected cost. Let's first look at the probabilities of the ray stopping. We have this ray traveling through the probabilistically occupied grid. There are various points on its path where it can stop with different likelihoods. It will stop at the first voxel in its path if that one is occupied, or the second voxel in its path if the first one is free and the second one is occupied, or the third one, and so on. Lastly, it will escape the grid if all the voxels in its path are empty. The thing to note here is that the likelihood of all of these happening is determined in terms of the shape prediction x. In fact, there's a nice formula, but I'll spare you the details. But here's a visualization, with red indicating a high likelihood and we see that under this predicted shape, the ray is not likely to stop when it enters the grid, but is more likely to stop around the predicted chair back. So we instantiated these event probabilities, and now we want to define how inconsistent each of these events is with what we know for this ray. Let's first consider the case of a depth observation. We have observed some depth for this ray, and if you consider this event shown, you'd say that it's very inconsistent with the observation, as in this event, the ray stops much more early than what was observed. The next event shown is a bit less inconsistent, and the third one is even less inconsistent. Finally, the event of the ray escaping is again highly inconsistent. We can define an event cost function to capture this notion. The cost function shown here penalizes the difference between the observed depth for this ray and the depth under event i. And here's a visualization with red indicating a high cost. Again, we see that there's a large cost associated with the ray stopping very early or the ray escaping, but there's a low cost, which is sort of white color, for the ray stopping around where we observed it to. So we formulated these event costs and probabilities in terms of which the ray consistency loss was defined. Note that the ray consistency loss is differentiable with respect to the shape prediction x because the event probabilities were a nice function of the shape x. Um, the figure here considers a depth observation, but as I promised earlier, we want to handle different kinds of observations as well. It is in fact pretty straightforward to do that by just defining the corresponding event cost function. I'll not be able to go into the details, but we can handle foreground mask supervision by just defining a corresponding event cost function here. In the figure here, the event probabilities have stayed exactly the same as before, and just the event cost function has changed. We can do the same for color observations. Well, actually, there's something extra that we need to define the event cost functions in this case. If our CNN predicts one extra thing, a per voxel color, then we can define an event cost function that penalizes the difference between the observed color and the color predicted at that stopping point. Again, more details are in the paper, but the takeaway is that the same formulation with event costs and event probabilities can be used to define the loss here. Looking back at the big picture, we defined a ray consistency based term to instantiate this geometric con consistency loss. And now we can move to reaping the rewards of our efforts and use this in many interesting scenarios. So we learned single view 3D prediction using multi-view supervision across a few data sets. First, we look at the shape in the data set as it is a clean synthetic setting to analyze our approach. Here, we train a CNN to predict 3D shape using multi-view mask or depth supervision. At test time, our CNN infers 3D from a single RGB image. Let's see some sample results. Our predictions using mask supervision look pretty reasonable, except for the fact that we can't learn concavities, for example, in the chair below. But using depth supervision addresses this issue and the results improve. We also see that our predictions using this much weaker form of supervision are of a similar quality to those using the stronger full 3D supervision. We then also applied our approach to a more realistic case, the Pascal VOC dataset. Here, we train a CNN to predict 3D and ask it to be consistent with the annotated foreground masks and pose available. Let's look at some more predictions for sample images. A deformable model uh, fitting-based method performs well 
but it can't handle diverse shapes. For example, the sofa shown below, as the mean chair in this case had four legs and it can't deform far enough to explain the sofa. Our approach, trained using just Pascal VOC mask and pose annotations, performs comparably. However, the training data is a not, not a lot and that restricts performance. And again, we can't learn concavities using mask supervision. Actually, if we don't use our approach, but just train using lots of synthetic data with realistic rendering, the performance actually improves. However, we can combine our approach on the Pascal dataset with the synthetic data available and obtain even better results as it essentially allows the synthetic data network to adapt better to the real image domain. We evaluate using ground truth annotations, which are actually um, the closest CAD model as, ha as has been labeled by some human annotator. And talking of ground truth 3D models, here is my favorite annotation example. Given this image, our prediction looks something like this, which is a fairly reasonable prediction. But the annotated ground truth closest model is something like this, and that's completely far off. This is actually a slightly rare case, but the point here is that it's really, really hard to get actual ground truth 3D supervision for real images, and so we can't rely on ground truth 3D for training, which was obviously a primary motivation for our work. We also showed qualitative results in two more cases, the cityscapes dataset, where we learn from a car moving around, and have our CNN predict uh, per voxel occupancies and semantics, and the ShapeNet dataset, where we had our CNN predict per voxel occupancies and color using only RGB supervision now. Unfortunately, I won't have time to go into the detailed results, but please see the paper for more details. That concludes the formulation and its applications. There are three key points I'd like you to take back. First, we can learn 3D prediction without ground truth 3D supervision by leveraging geometric consistency. Secondly, we presented a ray consistency based formulation to operationalize this idea of learning through three, uh, geometric consistency. And lastly, we saw that this allows us to learn single view 3D reconstruction across many diverse scenarios. I'd like to thank you for your attention. And we have released code. Hope you find it useful for your research. Thank you very much. Please come step up in front <laughs> if you have any question. Maybe until there's someone, I may ask a question. Um, so we've also worked a little bit in uh, in the area of uh, ray potentials, and I first of all I, I really appreciate the uh, the work uh, of the differentiability. Um, did you also like as like the advantage I see here is that uh, you can do this basically with single image supervision per example, mm -hmm. um, but if you have multiple uh, inputs, uh, then you could for a baseline, for instance, reconstruct one where you like reconstruct the shape uh, using these ray potential techniques that also work on RGB data and then use this as a 3D loss, which would be a two-step approach. Did you compare to such a baseline if it compares favorably yeah, to actually such? Actually, we do have some comparison for the case of depth where we have sort of multiple depth images and we have this two-step approach. Mm -hmm. uh, for the case of depth, the baseline performed similarly if the depth supervision was perfect. But our approach was much more robust to noise than the baseline because the baseline is instead of sort of the higher order term that the ray potential has. Okay. Any other questions? No? Then let's thank the speaker again.